All right, just a couple of little tips, tricks, hints, whatever. This is question number six, and it's a owner of a movie theater would like to predict we weekly gro gross revenue based on television ads and newspaper ads. So I go in and I copy it and I paste it, and then I make that a little bit wider so I can actually read a little bit better. And then I do my thing. I go to data, data analysis, I go to regression. What I'm predicting is weekly gross revenue. My independent variables are my newspaper and television advertising. And I clicked labels, output range. Let's move that down here somewhere. And I'm clicking some other things that I'm going to talk about and I click OK. And what happened? Well, read it. It says the input, there's non-numeric data. Why? Because if you noticed, close that, if you notice, these are, all these are cells. So what I probably would do is, I mean, this probably, oops, revenue, and then I would just delete those rows because it thinks that each one of those other rows were actual data. So now I can go back to my data, data analysis, regression, my Y values are only these, my X values are only these. I'm doing my labels, my output range, bring it up a little bit. And then notice I've clicked everything in the residuals except one fit plot. So residuals, standardized residuals, and residual plots. And I say, okay. So let's kind of talk about some of this stuff. So if you remember, a residual is the error. So what's the error? The difference between your predicted revenue and the actual revenue. So how could I do that? How could I predict it? Well, right there, right? There's my coefficients. So I could take and do my regression equation, which says my intercept, let's absolute reference that, plus my television ads times the five, which are in thousands, five thousand spent, and then plus my newspaper, and absolute reference that, and then times this. And if I take this and I drag this straight down, looky, 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 it's right here. So that's what this output is, residual output is, is this is actually showing me my predicted for each observation. All right, now I have two things going on here. I have residuals and standard residuals. Well, what is a, a residual? Well, a residual is the error. So how do you find, oops, how do you find the actual error? Well, to find the error, you would take what you observed minus what you predicted. And of course, I can copy that straight down. And you can see that's these same values here. Okay, so that's my residuals, my error. What standard residuals? Do you remember the normal distribution, standard normal? We have to standardize our mean to zero. So we could just look probabilities up in a table. That, that's what these are. These are z-scores. So this is if I standardize the data, how many standard deviations I am either um, below or above, in this case, looking at predictions. Well, as we know, probably, you know, two plus and minus two standard deviations is typically what we consider an outlier. So it doesn't look like there's any outliers here. But that's what these values mean. And then over here, my graphs might be easier to kind of see this a little better, is if you notice by looking at some are below, some are above. So I see one, two, three, four, five below and three above. We'll notice my one, two, three positive values. Those are the ones that are actually above. So this is what I actually observed, okay? And then based on how much error I have. And then of course the same thing um, with the newspapers. So it's kind of nice if you have many variables, it gives you a plot 
based on all of these. But this is good stuff to know because that way you can very quickly find, you know, does it look like there's some outliers in your data by looking at the standardized residuals. Now, just to be complete, we can see there's my um, test statistic. There's my p-value. If I'm testing this like on alpha 0.01, I definitely would reject and say there is sufficient evidence to conclude that there is a significant relationship among these variables. And then, of course, I can come down and look at each independent variable. Okay, And so I can see by each independent variable that I am going to reject the null. Um, that both of these do have significance. But get, kind of get where, you know, I mean, you're just clicking an extra button for these residuals. Start to look at these because these would help you see in your data what's going on as far as outliers.